It's Halloween. <laughs> that wasn't very scary, was it? I tell you what is scary, being this close to an open flame. There's a candle in that. I keep knocking my pumpkins. That's not a euphemism. Boobs. Hi guys, I'm Shelley. Welcome back to my channel. It's Halloween, apparently. And the time when all things scary happened. So in the spirit of scary, I have decided to tell some horror stories. More specifically, some inaccessibility horror stories. If you haven't guessed by now, I am disabled. Hi, this thing doesn't work properly. Neither does the rest of me, for that matter. A good friend of mine here on YouTube, Miss Emily Davison, who I link here, there, everywhere, go and check her out, she's fabulous, came up with the idea of inaccessibility horror stories. Let's get spooky. Let's tell some horror stories. And I'm making a joke of it. But I do want to say, truth be told, although this video is supposed to be funny and entertaining, inaccessibility is a real thing. It is a horror that hits disabled people and chronically ill people every single day. It makes a huge amount of difference between living a fulfilled, happy life and being stuck in bed, being stuck in your house. Because inaccessibility doesn't just mean not being able to get around in the outside world. It can sometimes mean not even being able to get around your own house. It can completely suffocate your life if you are unable to get around, if you are unable to interact with the world. So although I'm going to make this fun and I'm going to tell some funny stories and just go, oh look, all the things I can't do. In all seriousness, this is real. It affects people. It affects me. And yeah, that's, that's the serious note, really. So let's get telling some, some stories, shall we? Let's start with these things behind me. My books. I love these pretty things behind me. But as somebody who has cognitive difficulties and brain fog and eyesight issues and dyslexia, reading books isn't necessarily something I can do. Most of the time, my books come from Audible. They come from spoken word because it's the easiest way for me to be able to take on information. When a book that you have waited for and sat on and prayed for and you're just like, oh, it comes out, it comes out, I'm going to get my... No, I'm not going to get my pity paws on them the same day as everybody else. I sit and I stare at Audible for a very, very long time, waiting for this book to come out, narrated to be announced, or date to be announced, or this may or may not come to fruition. The amount of books that are audioed in America, and you can just like, I can see it on audible.com, but I can't make it shift to audible.ho.uk because the rights haven't been bought in the UK. You've made the damn thing, just release all. Oh. I'm lucky enough that I haven't had to read textbooks for a very long time. Lord knows if I had to because they're hardly put on audio at all. It's ridiculous. It's not a major horror story, but to me, it just gets my goat. Then we have accessibility out in the world. Now, I have EDS, which means all of my limbs are a bit... Well, let's just say I don't have control over them most of the time. So if I go out, quite a lot of the time I am in a wheelchair. So on the occasion that I want to go to a local theatre, I will phone in advance and say, Hi, excuse me, do you have disabled access? Can I bring my wheelchair? And there is a local theatre here called the Bristol Hippodrome. I'm going to name names because stuff you, because they have fixed the problem now. I will admit they have been great now. They've, they've, they've done a whole new setup, so good for them. But for years upon years upon years, you get there, you're stuck on the side of an aisle. So there's a seat, there's the aisle, there's a wall. You take up the whole space. You're blocking off the aisle completely. There is a kind of walkway around the side, which most considerate human people will use. But quite a lot of time, not only myself, but people in my family who are also in a wheelchair have been half clambered over because people want to get to the other side of the aisle. There's another aisle over there. You could go that way. You do not need to climb over the disabled person in the wheelchair. I didn't ask to be put in an aisle. The Hippodrome said that they had room for me. They put me there. The Hippodrome's own ushers used to climb over us. The amount of pain that causes for somebody who dislocates very, very easily or is sensitive to touch or just anything. It's common sense. Don't climb over somebody. Then there are the times where you go see a play and strobe lighting isn't warned. I went to see Miss Saigon and they didn't say at the beginning of the show, this has strobe lighting. So I'm just watching it going, oh, this is good. This is good. Then a helicopter comes down on stage, poof, right in my face. Doom, 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 doom. Light slamming in my face. My head went down. 
all hell broke loose inside my head and there was no warning not a thing so i ended up with a migraine for three days and then there are the venues who you phone and go oh yes we have disabled access yes it's fine get there and there are steps um well we could carry your wheelchair down and then maybe you could get out of it and bump yourself down on your butt a couple of steps. Get out of my wheelchair and bump down on my butt when I dislocate really easily. And what am I supposed to do when I want to go back up? Don't make me turn up, pay for my ticket, and then have to bump myself down the stairs. Even worse. A venue had disabled toilets. Downstairs. Who puts disabled toilets not on the same level as access? How did they even think that through? Don't get me started on disabled toilets. More horror stories. They're usually filled with absolute crap so that you can't get your wheelchair in. They're filled with tables. They're filled with cleaning products. They're filled with chairs. I mean, just get a broom closet. And half the time, I can't even open the toilet door. Heavy doors is a horror story because I can't open disabled toilet bathroom doors. Why are they so heavy? I don't understand. They have a lock. There is no need for them to be that heavy. Try opening a disabled door while pushing your wheelchair back, having it open, getting the wheelchair in there just in time to block the door open instead of it slamming you half in the face. If you don't have somebody with you, I, I can't open a bathroom door. I can't open most doors, to be honest. Then you have public transport. Oh joy, I have given up on public transport because having a wheelchair or even using crutches, buses are a nightmare. Buses do not park close enough to the uh, curb to be able to get a wheelchair onto the bus to be able to maneuver yourself onto the bus with a stick again with a wheelchair you can't get on and off a train with a wheelchair unless you have help and the amount of times that if you book help and tell them you need assistance they just don't show up to the point that i just do not i cannot use public transport at all it's just not an option so i'll order a taxi if i don't have a car amount of taxi drivers who don't know how to deal with a wheelchair if i book a taxi they always know I am in a wheelchair. That's just something I say as standard. The amount of times they have turned up without the right car to put a wheelchair in. Or the amount of times my wheelchair has been damaged getting in and out of a taxi because they don't handle it properly. You ask them nicely, please be careful, don't knock it because the wheel can go out in alignment or anything like that. No, that bang, slop. And you're left with a half broken wheelchair. Then if miracles by miracles, you make it to the shops, you make it out. You've you've managed to get your wheelchair there. You've managed to get where you're going. Aisles and shops. About that wide sometimes. And you just there are so many shops I just can't get into with a wheelchair. Sometimes you're lucky. If you're in like a big supermarket, wide aisles. But would they stick something in the middle of an aisle, yes it, you're stuck. You gotta turn around and go back. The amount of times I've gotten actually stuck. And I've ended up knocking produce off of shelves, knocking, you know, different things. I don't go into a glass aisle. I don't go into a crockery aisle. I won't go into any aisles with breakables in it because I'm stuck. You just, you can't go into that shop. Sorry, we didn't think that one through. Claire's accessories, that, that's a big one. I can never go into Claire's accessories in a wheelchair because there's just too many things to, you can't manoeuvre. That can also happen when you're out and about with curbs. I don't know if you've seen this. It's over Twitter quite a lot and it's happened to me in the past, where a lamppost or a parking thing will be smack bang in the middle of the pavement. So there's no way of getting a wheelchair around unless you push it into the road. The really, really big curbs in pavements that take up like half the pavement. So suddenly there's a pavement and then suddenly it goes down like that. You try getting a wheelchair over that, just going straight over it. You're just like, mm, and it tips the wheelchair and you go flying. And you have to take all of these things into consideration when trying to leave the house. Can you see why I don't leave the house that much? I mean, don't even get me started on, on, on shopping deliveries to your house and how they aren't disabled friendly because I can't have certain deliveries from certain supermarket shops anymore because they don't bring the shopping in. They literally stand there at the door and I can't manoeuvre myself and the products inside the door properly. I also can't carry heavy things because, hi, my arms don't work properly. So I now have to work out how to get the food from the front door to the kitchen. I can't carry it. So, so what's happening? When it used to be they would bring it in and they'd stick it on the kitchen counter for me. That was the policy. And now that's not the policy anymore. They've taken that accessibility away. Accessibility 
is huge. It's major. It is the difference, as I said, between a fulfilled life, being able to go to work, being able to go out with your mates, being able to go to the pub, being able to go to the theatre. Those are just the social things. Being able to get your own shopping in. So now that I've completely depressed you about life and how much it sucks for disabled people sometimes, um, that is my Halloween horror stories. That wasn't really that funny. It was basically just me ranting, but, but uh, these are all true. These are all really true. I'm gonna go have a lie down and blow this candle out because I'm scared I'm gonna catch the house on fire. That would be a horror story. Will I be back next week or will I have burnt the house down? Tune in next week to find out. I hope you guys have a great Halloween. Bye. Because inaccessibility, inaccessibil inaccessibility, I'm having trouble with that word.